Hey y'all, welcome back to The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Today we're going to be tackling the first dungeon, the Eastern Palace. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to head back through this little rock field here, the Octa Rocks. It's not a very far walk to the dungeon, but we are going to stop off at the uh, the little hut that Sahashua, I believe that's the way to pronounce it, is hiding in. That's the guy that we were supposed to be looking at. Are looking for, I mean, in the uh, in back in Kikariku. Of course, he wasn't there. If you're following along with the story, the actual story, uh, you'd know that he wasn't there. And uh, I think it's his uh, nephew, I believe, or either his son, back in um, Kikariku, actually tells you exactly where he's at. He's actually here in the Eastern Palace ruins. Uh, so this is him, and uh, he's going to tell you more of the legend. Uh, you don't really have to talk to this. I'm going to skip through it real quick. It says it'll give you something if you complete the dungeon and bring him back the uh, first pendant. What we're really in here for, though, is what's behind his wall, which is some goodies. So let's go back here, and we get 50 rupees, bombs, and 50 more rupees for a total of 100 rupees. So that's not a bad haul there. We're going to head out of here. We'll actually come back here out to the dungeon to collect that item that he's talking about. But for now, we're going to go straight to the dungeon. Uh, these little guys here, I don't know their exact names, but they're pretty much exactly like the boss of the dungeon. Uh, the boss's name is Armos, so I don't know if these are like mini Armos or something like that. We don't really have a weapon to, that's very effective against them now. I think the sword's pretty much the best thing we have. But the item we get in the dungeon, the bow, makes very short work of them. And you will notice that if you kill them with the swords, sometimes they'll drop arrows, which is kind of giving you a hint of what you should use against them. We're gonna skip this area. This area is kind of a maze. If you don't know exactly which way to go, it can be annoying to make it up to the dungeon. But uh, as you can see, I've played this game enough. I know exactly how to get to the dungeon. It's not super hard, but it can be annoying for a first-time player. So here we are in the Eastern Palace, the first dungeon of the game, the first proper dungeon of the game. We're gonna go through the center door. The other two doors don't matter. They just lead to dead ends. We're gonna clear out these guys. I always thought these guys uh, reminded me of Tangela, the Pokemon, which is kind of funny. Press the switch here on the floor and continue onward. This room right here is always kind of, uh, I don't know, cool to me. The way the cannonballs shoot and you have to kind of dodge them. It always felt like something like uh, out of Indiana Jones. So we're going to run past that. We're going to go over here to the left. There's another chest that we're going to grab real quick. And there we go. 100 more rupees. If you're maxed out at 999 at this point, you might not want to open that chest because if you do, you basically waste the rupees. Uh, you'll collect the item, but of course your rupee counter won't go up because you're already at max. So if you're at max rupees, you might want to save that for later. Although there's only really one big purchase we have to make in the game, and after that, rupees are more or less useless. Let's head over here. You don't have to go this way if you don't want to collect everything in the dungeon. We're just going over here to grab the map. These little skeletons are easiest to kill with a, uh, a spin attack. And that's because if you slice at them normally, they'll actually try to jump out of the way, which can be super cool like this. And later on, we'll run into ones that are... These are the blue skeletons. You can see they have kind of a bluish tint on their head. Later on, we'll run into the red ones, and they'll actually, when they jump away, they'll throw a bone at you. So those can be super annoying to fight. So here's the first anti-fairy we ran into. Remember last episode I was talking about how the magic powder was mainly useful for turning anti-fairies into fairies, so now we're going to see that. Well, briefly, very briefly, you saw that a fairy came out when I sprinkled it on. It can be a little hard at first to get the timing right to sprinkle it on there, but once you get it down, it's pretty easy. Head on down here, and in this chest is the map. Now, if this is your first time playing, the map may be useful to you. It's not very useful to me, though. Down here, hidden under this little overhang, there's actually some uh, pots that are kind of hidden there. Not many people know that. It's really useless. There's nothing you can do with them. I think they mostly just have hearts under them, but it's there nonetheless. It's kind of one of those little hidden details in the game. Head back over here to this main room, and this time we're going to go to the left. And this is the way we have to go to continue through the rest of the dungeon. Alright, so we got more of these skeletons. Yeah. There we go. 
These guys drop bombs, but I don't know if bombs really do that well against them. I don't think it, they would because it'd be really hard to get them to walk into them. I say as it immediately works the first time I try it. So I guess they are pretty effective against them. It's just your timing has to be good. I prefer to use pots because they're instant kills and you don't have to wait around for it to go off. Yeah, there we go. And one more. There we are. And continue onward. Here is the compass. And as you can see, now we know where the boss is. Uh, some Zelda games, the compass shows you where chests are. This one, it just shows you where the location of the boss is, so it's not as useful as other games. Uh, these little things on the wall always reminded me of Kakuna, the Pokemon. I don't know what they're supposed to be exactly, but it just looks like a Kakuna to me. <laughs> like a, just a green Kakuna with orange eyes. Alright, this is a little telepathic tile thing you can talk to uh, Sah Sahashala. God, I can never pronounce his name. It's such a difficult one to pronounce, but anyway, it'll let you talk to him. It'll give you a hint as to what you're supposed to do or something. I don't know. It's been so long since I've bothered with it, I don't really know what it says anymore. But uh, these one-eyed monsters are supposed to be killed with the bow, but we don't have the bow yet, so what we can do in the meantime is actually kill them with pots, which is decently effective. There's another one on the other side. I'll go ahead and take him out as well, just for the fun of it. So here's the big chest. This is what the dungeon items are in in this game. And since we don't have the big key yet, if we try to open it, he's just going to say, yeah, it's locked. So we gotta find the key, and that's actually what we're about to go do now. Let's go ahead and kill this guy real quick, just for the fun of it. There we go. Five more arrows that we cannot use yet. So now, as you notice, we're actually below one of the rooms we went to earlier. The room, the room right before the uh, map room. So we're actually gonna take these anti fairies out. And there you can see they do turn into fairies. There's more Tangleus down there. I'm gonna head over here and um, there's a bunch of skeletons in here, but the only thing we're after is the key that's in this pot. So we're actually just gonna leave the rest of those and just get out of here. I'm take out these Tangleus real quick. There we go. And go through here. So now we're back in the third room of the dungeon, the Indiana Jones room, as I referred to it as earlier, I guess. <laughs> we're actually just walking through over to this room, and this is where we're going to get the big key. First, we have to take out all of these uh, enemies that are in here. You see those anti-fairies that are covering that pot? That pot has a switch that actually makes the chest appear up there. But to do that, we have to take out all of the enemies. So, let's go ahead and get that done. I'm actually going to grab one of these pots so I can kill that one-eyed monster thing. I don't know what they're actually called. I'm sure they have an official name, I just don't know what it is. And now, oh wait, I missed an enemy somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. And now the anti-fairies are going to go nuts, and we can actually get to the chest. Ooh. Can we not get hit by them. And there we go, the big key. So now we're going to head back to that big room we were in with the chest in the center. And we're going to finally grab the bow. We're loaded up with arrows, so we should be ready to use it. The game actually kind of just loops you back around, which is actually kind of handy. Oh yeah, okay. Um, this chest, something special happens when you open this chest, a bunch of skeletons are come down, and well, I just let you see what's going to happen. You can actually make these guys collapse too if you shoot them. And then the skulls come off, and they chase you around. Ah! They do eventually go away, though, so it's no big deal. Alright, so now that we have the big key, we can actually go through this door up here that we couldn't get through earlier. But before we do that, we're going to hop down this pot. And down here is a secret room with fairies in it. There's only two fairies, because that's the maximum amount of um, bottles you could actually have at this point. So, I had to use one in the last episode, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a fairy here. Collect the other one, and warp back out. Alright, there we go. Now we're on to the second half of the dungeon. Um, not a whole lot of problem solving in this, it's more just like get through the rooms and get to the end. Uh, 
since it's, it's waking this guy up. This guy up. Oh, I missed. Let's get some light going so you guys can actually see what's going on a little better. Alright, now I'll kill this guy. There we go. Alright, got the key. Over here is actually a room with anti fairies and rupees in it. I'm not gonna bother killing these anti fairies. Oh, they're gonna kill me. Is what's gonna happen. <laughs> Just collect all these rupees up. And again, and again, if you already have 999 rupees, don't even bother because there's really no point. I'm not gonna bother lighting it back up because the next room is lit, I believe. So there's really no point. More anti fairies. And some items. And this one has a switch that we need to hit to go through the next room. Okay, so this one's supposed to be kind of like, I don't know, a guessing game. There's switches under each of these guys, uh, but the top left is the one that we want. Oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking about the next room. <laughs> the top left is the switch in the next room, it's the bottom left. Or the bottom left. I don't know why I was saying left. So it's the top left switch in this room. The cannonball room. And now we are two rooms before the boss. So we get very close. As you can see this dungeon, there is pretty much nothing to it. It went really quickly. Hey, I forgot pots don't affect the red ones. That was being clever there, I was gonna throw a pot and then shoot an arrow. Alright, so this next room is pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna walk in, charge our sword, and cha kill every enemy at once. <laughs> That's always really fun to do. Okay, uh, let's these guys. There we go. And now we're just gonna click all this stuff up. We're actually full, so I'm gonna skip the other ones. And here we are, the boss, Armos. So what you're gonna want to do is just kind of stand right here in this spot and just shoot arrows like crazy. And that's pretty much all there is to the boss. It's super easy. And there you go. That quick, it's already over. And now we get our first pendant. Alright, so now that we're done with the dungeon, we're going to actually head back over to Sahashilo's hut real quick and get that item that he was talking about. So we're just going to take the shortcut here by hopping over all these ledges and enter his house. I guess it's more of a hideout than a house, but whatever. Alright, so now he's going to tell you more of the legend. You can read this if you want, I'm not going to take the time. Da-da-da. And here we get our treasure, which is the Pegasus Shoes. Uh, a lot of people incorrectly call it the Pegasus Boots, even me. Uh, I think Pegasus Boots sounds better anyway, but they are technically called the Pegasus Shoes, which I think is stupid. But what this lets us do is uh, do a dash attack, which A, allows us to run faster, and B, is a really cool uh, way to kill enemies. So, bam, like that. Let's see if we can get this guy to wake up and we'll actually kill him with it. Ah! Actually, it takes a lot of hits on these guys because these guys are actually meant to be killed with the arrows, as I said earlier. So, bam, one hit kill. Alright, well, that is it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be collecting some more items and preparing to enter the second dungeon. So, until then, guys, take it easy.